What's going on, guys? It's Jimmy here. Welcome to our daily show where we discuss everything going on here in our country that you need to know about on a daily basis, including money, investing, the stock market, recession, and inflation, the fourth stimulus package update, and the stimulus check update. If you haven't subscribed to our YouTube channel yet, make sure to click the subscribe button down below. It's completely free to do so. And remember that new videos come out here every day at 10 a.m., 3 p.m., and 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And also, thanks for hitting the like button for us down below. Also, stay to the end of this video. I'm going to have a special guest appearance here. Uh, with a little bit of a debate session that, that you'll want to stay to the end. So make sure to watch all the way to the end of this video. Russia has confirmed that they are practicing nuclear-capable missile strikes on the Baltic coast. Yeah, that's right. They are practicing nuclear strikes. Yeah, you can see uh, pictures of it here. This is not good news for anybody in the world. It's just, uh, I just don't even know what to say. And uh, if, if, if Russia starts using nukes on anybody, Ukraine or anybody else, what do we do then? What happens? If, if nuclear war breaks out, God help us all. Also, here's a still image from a video showing smoke of the steel complex in Mariupol in thurs on Thursday, uh, even though there's supposed to be a ceasefire there. But clearly, there's not. And... Uh, uh, unbelievable. And, and there, meanwhile, there's civilians in there as well. And you can see here, meanwhile, in Ukraine, Russia announced a three-day ceasefire in the besieged city of Mariupol to allow civilians to safely evacuate. Well, pictures clearly show that that was determined to be a lie. Once again. You can see here, Ukrainian officials allege that Russia is trying to destroy the remaining soldiers in the steel plant, claiming Kremlin-led forces had resumed the offensive to seize the plant, as these new pictures show. <laughs> with, the steel, with the still image from the video, Russian President Putin's spokesman denied that troops are storming the steel plant. When they were asked during the press conference, uh, Dmitry Peskov said, you were witnesses. The president gave the order to refrain from the assault. No other orders were announced, and the corridors are working today. So apparently, if, if Putin said, don't attack, clearly we all have to believe that there's no way they could be attacking. Right? The pictures have to be a lie, and the video has to be a lie. Sarcasm, just so everybody's clear there, uh, because there's video and pictures with timestamps, but of course, Russia would never lie, even though they've been caught countless times. Remember, they said they weren't going to invade Ukraine, remember? And then they invaded a few days later. Remember they said they weren't going to uh, bomb and attack civilians, and we have countless pictures and videos of uh, apartments and hospitals just destroyed. It's just, yeah, unbelievable. And now they're testing nuclear missiles. So the question is, what is going to happen with that? Is that the next step? And what is the world going to do if they start launching nuclear missiles. I don't even know. Do we, does the rest of the world get involved in a nuclear war? Meanwhile, the EU, the European Union, is considering or taking a major step towards banning all Russian oil from Europe and new sanctions on Europe as well. Remember, it's not just the U.S., that is supplying munitions, aid, and money to the Ukraine. 
Uh, some some people believe that, but that's completely untrue. Uh, almost all of Europe is com is also aiding Ukraine with money, munitions, and supply and military supplies as well. And the EU is also considering banning Russian oil as well. If they do this, it could send the price of oil and the price of gas skyrocketing um, across the world and in the U.S., even though we don't buy any Russian oil. Remember, the price of oil and the price of gas is a global price. Check this out. Back now to the war in Ukraine. Starting a few minutes from now, the U.N. Security Council will be holding a meeting on Ukraine. The U.S. ambassador says the discussion will focus on protecting Ukrainian civilians, dealing with food shortages and further isolating Russia. It is the first meeting of the UNSC since the United States took over as the leader of the council at the beginning of May. And the latest on the war itself, for the first time, Russian forces have breached Ukrainian defense fences at that steel plant in Mariupol. According to a Ukrainian commander, there are, quote, heavy, bloody battles now being fought in the plant's bunkers and fallout shelters. About 200 civilians are believed to be still inside that plant, along with an unknown number of Ukrainian soldiers. At this point, they are all that stands between Russia and full control of the city of Mariupol. There is fierce debate underway at the European Union as members decide wh whether or not to sign on to a new proposal that would ban Russian oil imports within six months. Already, Hungary and Slovakia have raised objections and have been offered special exemptions to keep them an extra year, give them an extra year to adjust to the ban. But other countries, such as Poland, believe the proposed timeline is too slow. The plan needs unanimous approval from all 27 countries in order to pass and could be voted on within days. And the U.S. is offering security assurances to Sweden and Finland during the period after they apply to join NATO and before they are officially granted entry. That period could last up to a year, and Russia has threatened both nations with consequences if they seek to join the International Defense Alliance. On Wednesday, the Swedish foreign minister said U.S. Secretary of State Anthony Blinken promised various forms of security assurance for both countries. Let's bring in former U.S. Ambassador to Finland, Derek Shearer. It's good to have you, sir. There's so many different issues to talk about. I think I want to talk about the uh, U.N. Security Council and the ban on, on oil and, and the, the special exemptions for two countries that are very, very heavily dependent on Russian oil. Is there a way to speed it up? Because that seems like it would squeeze Russia in a way that we haven't seen before. We'd like to speed it up, but it's hard because the West has allowed itself to become dependent, especially Europe, on Russian oil and gas. And so you can't change that relationship overnight. But certainly this war is going to change it in the long run. Yeah, Mr. Ambassador, could you, could you explain to our viewers just what a dramatic step it would be for Finland to become a part? Of NATO. I mean, we we we've looked at wonder as Germany has changed uh, changed their policy militarily uh, for the first time, obviously since forty five. But Finland becoming a member of NATO that is momentous. Can you explain how momentous that is? Well, it is a big change, and it's of course the opposite of what Vladimir Putin wanted to happen. He wanted to weaken NATO. Instead, NATO is going to be strengthened by taking in Finland and Sweden. Um, I was ambassador when Finland joined the EU, which became then the northern border of the EU with Russia. Now, once Finland joins NATO, it will become the 800-mile northern border with Russia. So Russia is ending up with two strong, well-developed, very tough countries added to the NATO situation. It's the opposite of what he wanted. And for Finland, who had to be neutral during the Cold War because of being on the Russian border, this is not a big change, but it's a significant change. Finland already has been using our F-18 Hornets, which they purchased when I was ambassador, and they've just decided to buy the new F-35s. They're fully interoperable 
with NATO, and they'll be a plus to the security of NATO. Yeah, and remember this, that if anybody attacks a country in NATO, it is a declaration of war against all the countries in NATO, including the United States. Okay, same thing with the European Union. If you attack, if anybody attacks a country in the European Union, um, it, the treaty says uh, all the European Union countries are then at war. So keep that in mind. That's why it's so strong to be a part of NATO or the European Union. And that's why um, Ukraine is basically somewhat on their own fighting this war. Um, you know, besides the fact that all these countries are, are giving them aid, you know, money and, and military supplies, but not fighting with them per se. You, you know what I mean? Um, if, if, if they were part of NATO or the European Union, Russia wouldn't even have attacked them, you know, because they can't, they're having such a hard time with just Ukraine. Imagine if it was Ukraine plus 30 other countries. I mean, I just it wouldn't even have happened. It wouldn't even have happened. Uh, either that or it would have just been all-out nuclear war, which would just be... We don't even want to talk about it. So, yeah, let me know your thoughts. Meanwhile, the longer this war goes on, the longer it's it's going to keep oil and gas prices high, the longer it's going to keep food prices high, the longer it's going to keep inflation high. Um, you know, the Fed is raising interest rates here in the U.S. and banks across the central banks across the world and governments across the world are raising interest rates to help bring down uh, inflation. But, uh, you know, this is it's. This is exacerbating the problem in, in due to the fact that oil and gas prices and food prices are, are being kept high because of the war. So this is this is just going to hurt us in the long run. Now, if the EU does ban Russian oil, it'll be interesting to see, not in a good way, but there's no other word to really describe it, what will happen to oil prices? My experts say that it, it, it will probably spike up oil prices dramatically. Um, we hope that it won't. We hope that it won't. But the problem here is that will there be enough oil to supply the rest of the market? Will there be a, a massive oil shortage? If there's a massive oil shortage, that sends demand up and oil prices would skyrocket. Now, you can see here on these uh, on this announcement already, the price of oil has already been going back up. Uh, the price of WTI crude is at 108 and a half and Brent crude is are up over 110 already, almost at 111 110 dollars a barrel. Um so this we are quickly rising back up. This was under $100 a barrel. Remember, Brent crude was, uh, the high was $140 a barrel back in March. But here's the real problem. Gas prices here in the U.S. have really never gone down. Very little. Look at the national price of, average price of gas here in the U.S. $4.25 a gallon now. 424.7. We might as well just say 425 for regular 547 for diesel oh my gosh a week ago diesel was 512 because they can because they can gouge us diesel takes less refining to make diesel Yes, but they charge us more, and they know that the all the. Here's the problem with gas and diesel, they know we have to buy it. Yeah, we're we're, we're Yeah, now now more and more people are switching to electric cars, but guess what? You have to buy electricity too. 
Electricity has been going up as well. Electricity has been going up as well. So one way or another, you have to buy it. You're, it's like food. You have to buy food. You have to buy food. You have to buy electricity. You have to buy gas. You have to buy diesel. This is absolutely insane that diesel is going up this much. Well, and if you think about it. Look at that. Oh, my. I, I think the previous, that was unbelievable. And if you think about it, what? Look what at this. Is this the, is the all-time high of what diesel. What is the main user of diesel? It's just semi-trucks. Yeah. And semi-trucks transport all the crap all over the country. Yeah, all the food. Yeah. And, and that's the main driver of why food is so high. I mean, the war in Ukraine as well. You know, they're, they're, uh, Ukraine and Russia are major suppliers of a lot of food products, yeah. even though they don't make it here to the U.S., most of them. It, it's rising. It's, it's making the, the prices go up globally. Mm -hmm. And when they go up globally, they're, they're charging the same here in the U.S. This price of diesel is insane. And here's the problem is that we are $30, we're 30% below the high of oil. Oil is at 110. Back in March, it was at 140 a barrel. So if we're 30% below the high, why is diesel at an all-time high? Because they can. It should be 30% lower. You would think. Not hitting all-time highs, not going up. Heaven forbid if it was only 25% lower and they kept an extra 5%. Right? And, this, and this is what makes me mad, right? It doesn't matter if the president is Trump. Or the president is Biden, because the president could be Trump right now, mm -hmm. and I would be defending Trump. Mm -hmm. it, it really makes me mad when people blame this on Biden. Like one man can have effect on every single other oil company and, and all the gas companies. Yeah, or, or they blame it because he shut down one pipeline that wasn't even operational. It's 8% completed. And the and the, it's not even it wasn't even completed, it's not even operational, and it doesn't even produce any oil. It's just a pipeline. Right. But this is the problem is that oil is 30 percent below what it was in March. And yet they're charging us the highest prices ever. It's just exorbitant greed. That's what it is. And, and think about all the tens of millions of Americans right now. That are just suffering food prices, gas prices. Think of all the Uber and Lyft drivers and Amazon drivers that are driving for a living and semi-truck drivers that have to pay for the gas themselves. Because, you know, a lot of them, they're independent contractors and stuff. And and they're just, they, they work for the company, you know, and they, they own the truck. They own the truck, yeah. This is insane. Think it's going to keep going up or is it going to go down? Well, you know, you know what they say, normally it goes up in the summer. Oh, no. It goes up for the summer driving season oh. and, so, and stuff. And, and I believe that the summer blend is more expensive. This is, this is a, a mat. And, and it's really tough to defend this because what do you do? As the gas companies? I've been getting a lot of comments, by the way. People want you to be on camera. All right. What, are you ready to come on right now? I can come on now. All right, jump on. <laughs> I guess she was uh, ready to jump on in. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, she uh, she was out and about a little bit today. And... Out and about. I went to the doctors. It's not. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, this is the, this is the how do you combat this? As the gas company? Yeah. You blame it on. No, no, no. How do we? Oh, how do we combat this? How do we stop we, this I, crisis? I, I don't know because no matter how much outrage and things from people, the Exxon and all the gas companies don't care. Say you were the president. The only thing that would work is if they put in into action that plan that they had about taxing them and using it for checks to people. For profits. Because either they pay the, the taxes on the higher profits above the threshold that's set and then people get checks. Or they lower their profits I feel like that by would, passing it on to people anyway. I feel like if they can get that passed, that would be cool. Because let's say they keep raising their prices. Mm -hmm. That's okay. They, they get taxed even more on it. Yeah. 
either and way, then they keep distributing even more checks. On either it. way, the money comes back to people. Either they lower their profits and lower their well, they lower their prices so the profits are lowered, so people benefit that way to stay under the threshold, or they go above the threshold and then people get checks. I think it's just it's so sickening this gas prices. I remember way back in the day when we owned the limo company. Um, mm -hmm. and that was back in like 2010, 2000, well, we sold in 2012. Yeah. So it was somewhere back then and the gas was over $4 a gallon. Um, and it was so expensive cause we had a whole fleet uh -huh. and whoo, of cars that didn't get the best gas mileage. Yeah. Big buses and big, huge limos that seated, you know, 20 people and, uh, for weddings and proms and. And uh, and stuff like that, and uh, they they were not cheap. No, they were not cheap, and we had a whole set of employees that depended on us for for their living, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, that was a a much different time. It was, it was you know it's weird how it was a different time, but it feels the same. I know. You know, it's it's funny how. We're, we're back in the same situation. Oh, with gas? Yeah. Yeah. You know? It is what it is. Yeah. So what do you think about this whole Supreme Court Roe versus Wade thing? Do you think it's going to get struck down? I don't know nowadays. A couple of people get a bug up their ASS and then they have to try and change it or whatever I, I personally am pro i i think i i think women should have the choice it's a horrible choice to have to make it's a horrible position to be in nobody thinks that it's good but it's the woman it the woman should be able to choose do you think that government well, and then don't forget there are situations where the woman's health is in question it's either the baby or the woman. You would possibly lose one. Like what? in a fallopian tube situation what with was a that? tubal pregnancy. What was that picture you were showing me? So, yeah, my wife's seen some things on uh, on the internet here. So she's seen this from a doctor. Uh, maybe you can show this on... I'll, on just, I'll just read it. Or she'll just read this. So this is from a doctor, Dr. Graham Walker. So on Twitter. What does this doctor say? Just so we're clear, the pregnancy that ends up in the wrong spot, like the fallopian tube, the one that will never turn into a baby and will rupture and kill your wife, daughter, or sister. Terminating that fetus is also an abortion, and they want to ban those too. So that's the problem is, is there's so many situations where it's almost medically necessary and, and that's where, to save lives. And, and that's, it's just, you can't, you can't. You can't catch all, just give it a pass for everybody to do. That's you can't catch all, about, ban it for everybody to do. It's that's too, what I talk about painting with a broad picture. Same thing with the child tax credits. It's too circumstantial. Where you talk about painting with a broad picture and saying, do a work requirement. You, you know, everybody's able-bodied. You can't say that because no, there's millions of people that are on Social Security. There's millions of grandmas and grandpas and million different circumstances. that are that are raising the children. Yeah. And you would exclude millions of children because their grandmas and grandpas are raising them. There's millions of people that are disabled, and the children wouldn't get those um, payments. Yeah. There's, you know, there's millions of people that, you know, like in those cases that you would disable from getting these child tax credit payments, you know, and, and look, now they haven't passed them this whole year and millions of children have fallen into poverty. And, and a lot of people put the blame on solely on Joe Manchin, <laughs> by the way, check out that I'll link you to that video on that, uh, that scandal that he's now and that was that, a hot one. That the New York Times has uncovered about him, uh, where he's apparently getting paid millions of dollars because of this coal, this coal mine he owns. Uh, I'll link you to that video. You definitely want to see that. But, you know, the, the whole thought of this Supreme Court thing is that should the government be able to mandate to, to, what a woman does with her body? Right. Mandate a pregnancy. 
as I saw Pramila Jayapal called it, government mandated pregnancies. Yeah, and and I've seen a lot of comments from our viewers here. Should the government be able to mandate a vaccine? Yeah, as well. And uh, we've, we've talked about that before in I the past. I think both of those theories, mandating a vaccine for for all and mandating abortions or medical procedures is anti-American. Yeah, it's more communist. It's just... When you force somebody to do something... Yeah. It's it's not really the American way. Yeah, and something that may the American way is may freedom. Their, their, Literally, our yeah. slogan for our company is "Let freedom ring," the freedom of choice. And like you said, it's the it's the woman's most difficult choice they'll ever have, ever. And no matter life. what choice they make, they may forever regret it, but they have to live with that choice, and that's between them and God. I mean. You have to do what you have to do and what is right for you and what your doctor thinks is right and so on. But I think that that's a choice that a woman has the right to make. And and with that, we've never had an abortion, just so everybody's... No, but uh, I did but have we've a, had I, a... I had a miscarriage. Uh, that was my first baby. Before Julian and... and no she, fun she's still i'm still affected by it even all the time and my mother had troubles as well she in fact had a tubal as well and she's still affected by it almost 40 years later yeah it's just it's and that's why julian's our rainbow baby yep the rainbow after the storm and and her parents call miracle her baby the miracle baby mm -hmm. because they they tried for years mm -hmm. and uh you know so that that's why painting with a broad brush is people's a, lives are too there's millions of people with, complicated. with complicated and that's why like if I was a Supreme Court justice, I, I couldn't put my myself in a woman's shoes and I, I couldn't I couldn't force a woman for me to make a decision for her. I just couldn't do it. Yeah. But you let me know your thoughts and, and like I said you know, uh, you know, I, I went to Sunday school and, and I get the whole religion thing. and I totally get it. Um, it's it, a horrible, horrible decision to have to make if you're in that position all around. No matter what you choose, it's it's just it's it's a bad situation to be in real bad. But that's why it should be up to the in my opinion, it should be up to the woman to mm -hmm. choose. Let her let her choose. Let her make the decision. And live with whatever as opposed to the government. Nobody wants the government to make the decision for them yeah. on anything. No. When you start having a, a government make a decision for you, it's just pfft. who wants the government to make the decision for them on anything? Not here in America. And the problem is, is we're talking about nine people on a Supreme Court that who fifty years ago were fine with all this. Yeah, and now, and now they have a change of opinion. It's just know. like that. That's why it, the the answer for any of this stuff, whether it's a vaccine, there isn't it, an, it's there a woman, isn't an answer. It's, it, it it's should a be individual it should basis, be the, a cases case basis. Whether no matter what it is, it should be. It's if it's your body, <laughs> it's it's your choice. Oh. <laughs> it should be if it's your body, it's your choice. Regarded no matter what the issue. Yeah, is. there's no blanket correct answer for everyone it's you make the what's best choice for you yeah so let me know your thoughts here my beautiful wife my beautiful guest uh maybe we'll see what some about the her. beauty in the back yeah beauty and the beast where is she <laughs> uh, she's, oh there she is she's in the she's, she's back behind stuff yeah that's my she's that's creeping. my uh wrestling state medal back there so oh, i hope she'll, she'll be knocking something oh over God, she, sure. she knocks it over and breaks it oh no she's like totally, oh, oh there, there she, she is, is. Yeah, so let me know your thoughts. We'll keep you up to date here with everything going on here. Make sure to subscribe down below if you haven't yet. It's completely free to do so. After subscribing, click the bell icon uh, <laughs> so you get new videos here uh, when they come out. New videos come out here every day at 10 a.m., 3 p.m., and 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Uh, click this video over here to watch that scandal video on Joe Manchin. How it's a good one. making millions of dollars here. Um, we had a long discussion last night at about 3 a.m. about it. 
Yeah. So <laughs> thanks for watching, guys. Click that video next, and we'll see you in the next video.